Welcome to the Quirks of German X, the series where I take a look at the unique German ports of games to see where they differ to the original. This includes censorship, voice acting and other regional differences. Previously, I've taken a look at the entire German Valve library, which, you know, you could check out if you haven't already. Just gives you a good idea of what to expect. But now, it's time for a video game series that's a much bigger part of my childhood, Wolfenstein. You might recall that German censorship can be quite strict when it comes to extreme violence, and even mere mentions of references to Nazism are often frowned upon. So how did Wolfenstein, a series in which to slaughter countless Nazis in the most brutal of ways, bear in that regard? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's begin with the very first title, Wolfenstein 3D. Wolfenstein 3D, released on the 5th of May 1992, was banned two years later in Germany. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Nah, I'm just yoinking a sploinking. It is true though, Wolf 3D was completely unpurchasable for close to three decades and the same applies to any and all ports of it. No iOS, no Xbox Live or PSN, no GBA, no 3DO and not even the god tier Atari Jaguar version, none. However, there's one version that did release over here, and very infamously so, the Super Nintendo one. Now, this wasn't an exclusive German port as it released worldwide in the same state, though some of the changes were done with the German market in mind. So for the sake of a better video, I'm bending the rules a little to include it. In regards to the differences, I'm only going to be focusing on the actual changes done to appear censors, not how it differs with the DOS original. First of all, as is tradition, all of the blood was completely taken out. Occasionally, it was turned white instead, I suppose to indicate spit or complete the innocent white paint. This was simple enough for most enemies, but a pretty impressive feat when it comes to the bosses, whose deaths are at times quite graphic. Removing all of that gun couldn't have been an easy task. Since Hitler's death was basically just blood, they simply modified the officer's death sprites. Oh, and the death cam that shows up after killing most bosses was removed as well. Decorative corpses and gore, like the countless skeletons and blood puddles, are obviously also nowhere to be seen, including blood splats on walls. Except for this pile of bones, but then again, that could be anything. The only blood that wasn't taken out, however, is on BJ's face when his health reaches a certain point. I can see why this one was fine, for reasons we'll get into at the end of the video. The designs of a lot of enemies were altered too. You probably already know that the dogs were changed into mutant rats, a change so delightfully cheesy that I welcome it with open arms. First, because shooting dogs can get a bit uncomfortable, and secondly, because it absolutely fits with the pulpy action novel vibe the game is going for. I mean, there's mutants with guns inside their chests that are swinging meat cleavers around for crying out loud. How could this be a change you take issue with? The bosses Otto Giftmacher, Gretel Große and General Fettgesicht were replaced with Franz Große, the Übermutant and the Death Knight from Spear of Destiny respectively. In an interesting turn of events, this was a way for Germans to also be able to enjoy at least parts of that game, as it was just as banned as Wolfenstein 3D here. Most importantly, however, Hitler was changed into the Staatmeister, meaning State Master, although it should be Staatsmeister. His mustache was also removed. I always find that so funny, like the few beer terrorists were the most offensive part of Hitler as a person, and removing them turns him way less monstrous. The Hitler ghosts or fake Hitlers are also gone. And despite the game clearly still taking place in Germany, all of the enemy voice lines consist of nothing more than Stop! Halt! And Coming for you! At least they're just as goofy as the originals, and I will admit that the last one genuinely scared me as a kid. The game also got rid of every single reference to Nazism or real world events. So all of the swastika symbols were removed. Not even replaced with anything like later titles, but just taken out entirely. So it seems like Staatmeister and his gang are really fond of random red flags and walls everywhere. However, one of the flag object sprites kept the white circle of the original, though I suppose there was no visible swastika on it in the first place. The Iron Cross symbol was also changed into a much more generic looking one. This is odd, considering the Iron Cross isn't strictly a Nazi symbol, as even the German army, the Bundeswehr, uses it to this day. I guess they wanted to eliminate any potential references to real organizations. Also, small tip, if you meet someone who's oddly fond of Iron Crosses to the point of tattooing them on their body, and especially if they're not in the German army, maybe don't hang out with them. It's essentially a socially acceptable swastika. Anyhow, the eagles remain the same, probably because they don't really look much like the Reichsadler used by the Nazis in the first place. All German text of the signs on walls was removed, however, though that might have just been due to the low texture resolution. The story and world of the game also saw quite a few reworks. To avoid real-life associations, Nazi Germany was turned into the Master State, the US into the Republic, and the SS were also turned into regular elite guards. 
The characters are very much still German, however, as most of them, like Hans Große, kept their German sounding names. Even the Übermutant, which kind of surprised me. The name is already a direct reference to the concept of the Übermensch, the ideal of the superior human that Nazis were obsessed with. It's not even a comparable term or anything that could excuse it. And yes, this makes Medic's line in TF2 a bit uncomfortable as well. I am the Übermensch! Like the Iron Cross, it's not strictly a Nazi concept, but it was very much popularized by them. The game also still takes place in Germany, referring to real places like Dresden and even fictional ones like Castles Heidenheim, Erlangen and of course the titular Wolfenstein. So maybe they didn't want to scrub any and all references to World War II, just the more egregious ones. Maybe the Holocaust never even happened in this universe. Here's hoping. There's two other versions of the SNES port that I'd like to take a look at too. The first one is the Japanese version, which is completely identical gameplay-wise. The only changes are to the game's story. In this one, all of the enemies you fight are zombies created by Dr. Shafts, even the regular humans. This makes it even less morally questionable to mow them down by the dozen. In a weird twist, however, the Startmeister is instead called Adolf Trautmann, which just baffles me. Why make the gameplay more kid-friendly, but then directly reference Hitler's first name? The other version of the game is the League prototype build. It's clearly unfinished, of course, but interestingly, it still features bleeding enemies, including the rats. And while all references to Nazism are gone already, the Iron Cross keeps its more distinct design. Hitler is also called Hista in this one, which was likely changed due to sounding too close to the original, which also makes the Japanese version of the name even more confusing. Overall, this port received some pretty heavy censorship, both in regards to Nazi references and blood and gore. It's very unfortunate because mowing the Nazis is one of the best pastimes you can get. Then again, Nintendo had a kid-friendly image to uphold, and what did you honestly expect from a SNES title in the first place? The only truly bloody game I can think of to land on the platform is Doom, maybe Mortal Kombat. Now, you might think that all of these changes make this the worst part of Wolfenstein 3D out there. But honestly, I disagree with that one. It's only the worst if you can play the uncut original, because then all you're left with is missing features. But in this day and age, when everyone has access to every single version of the game, including the one on DOS, it doesn't stand out so negatively anymore. In fact, I kind of prefer these changes in certain ways. First of all, because it makes the port stand out against all the others. But secondly, it makes it way easier for me to truly enjoy it. I mean, I grew up with the Wolfenstein games, so I have a lot of fondness for these worlds and their characters, as I do with Doom and Half-Life. But unlike with those games, where I'd absolutely buy a Cacodemon plush or collect Vortigon figures, I can't do that with Wolfenstein. I couldn't just say, yeah, Mecha Hitler's my favorite final boss, he has such a cool battle, without sounding like a fanatic. Because these games aren't entirely fictitious, they're based on real events and real people, and have uncomfortable connotations because of that. Hans Große may be a big dumb doofus, and I love big dumb doofus as a media, but he's also a Nazi. And Hitler saying goodbye to his wife in his dying dress might seem sweet, but he's also literally Hitler. It doesn't matter how cute the sprites look or how silly lines like Boop Bubble are, I can't enjoy or associate myself with them, especially since I'm German myself. But the SNES port removes all these references, while keeping the tone of the setting and the quirkiness intact. Granted, it also takes out a lot of the things I enjoy, like the aforementioned voice lines, but I find it easier to enjoy the world and characters of this one than the original. I still wouldn't collect a figure of Hitler, I mean Startmeister, because that's still a bit... Eh, but at the very least, he's not named after an actual monster that really did commit genocide. What I'd like to know, however, are the reasons behind these changes. How come this version of the game was scrubbed so clean? Just to appease Nintendo or Germany, or was there even more to it? To answer those questions, I decided to interview Rebecca Berger Becky Heinemann, one of the original programmers of the port. So, Rebecca, why don't you tell us a little about yourself as well as your experience in gaming? I'm Rebecca Ann Heinemann. I've been in the video game industry since the late 1970s. Um, my first real big break into the video game industry was me winning the Atari 2600 National Space Invaders Tournament. Afterwards, um, started working at a company called Avalon Hill Game Company because they found out I reverse engineered the Atari 2600 by myself. Then bounced around until eventually 1983 when Boone Corporation failed. We, the survivors of Boone Corporation, formed a company you may have heard of, um, Interplay Productions. I left around 1995, been forming companies like Logicware, Contraband, and now, of course, Old School and that's where I am today. 
And how do you relate to the SNES part of Wolfenstein 3D? Um, in 1990, 1990, 91, I um, was doing some freelance work and I ended up doing some work for a company called Softdisk. And that's when some people there you may have heard of, John Romero, John Carmack, Tom Hall, uh, were working there. So I started contracting with them doing um, Apple II GS and PC ports of some of their games. But then eventually the Super Nintendo version of Wolfenstein came about. So I started working with them on that, helping them port the game to the Super Nintendo. Because I had developed my own dev kit. I had this thing called a Sluggo, which is a ROM emulator. And of course, we had to rewrite the game quite a bit. And then that code base was the one which was the basis of the 3DO, the Macintosh, and the 2GS versions of Wolfenstein. That's why those four games all look pretty much the same. Because they all came from the code base, which was originally designed for the Super Nintendo. What can you tell us about the censorship of the SNES version? As you know, Wolfenstein is a Jewish World War II fighter fighting Nazis, murdering Nazis all over the place. Well, first off, in Germany, that doesn't fly because you can't have Nazis. But secondly, at this period of time, the early 1990s, Nintendo was really hung up about being family-friendly video games. They wouldn't let games like Mortal Kombat be done on the Super Nintendo because Mortal Kombat is all about blood and fighting. When we were doing Wolfenstein 3D for the Super Nintendo, the first thing they complained about was, you can't have German Shepherds in the game. And we're like, why? Because Nazis, German Shepherds, they kind of go together. I mean, German Shepherds. Um, they said, no, no, you can't shoot dogs. So we're like, okay, um, how about rats? And I said, okay, you can shoot rats. Well, we finished the game, we submitted it for final lock check, and then they said, oh, you can't have blood. I'm like, but there is no blood. We specifically didn't put blood in this game. It says, oh, when the rat opens its mouth to bite you, you can see blood in its mouth. We look at the art, it's his tongue. But because the tongue is such a bright red, they mistook it for blood and censored that. Was this done because Nintendo wanted to sell the game in Germany, or just because they wanted to keep a family-friendly image? No, 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 they, because they wanted to sell in Germany. I mean, there's all these different rules you have to do when you're selling boxed games in different countries. So, of course, if they wanted to make certain this game sells in Germany, it, can, it there has to be a version of the game manufactured that was both English and French, and inside of it has not a, not a stick of mentions of Nazis of any kind in order to be able to sell legally in um, Germany. How come some of the bosses got changed to ones from Spear of Destiny? Was it due to censorship since Gretel Große is female and Nintendo has policies against that, or just because he felt like it? He felt like it. When Wolfenstein 3D was made for the Super Nintendo, the Spear of Destiny was already out. So we already have the art assets for both games. Was the death cam, the replay of boss deaths, also removed due to censorship or due to hardware limitations? It was, we were running out of space and we were running out of time. We were doing the game around March, April, and so we had a deadline. And we were already kind of like gun shy about the fact that, you know, they didn't like dogs. We didn't know anything about the rat problem yet. If they have a problem with dogs, they're definitely going to have a problem with death cam. To save ourselves some effort, we just didn't put that in. What about the fake Hitlers? Why were they removed? Censorship. We had to remove everything that had to do with Hitler. Also, don't forget that the cartridge was uh, limited in space. So some of the things were cut out because of space. The prototype build of the game has censored Nazi symbols, but the blood is still intact. How come that stayed in the game longer? There was a period of time when we thought Nintendo might have allowed us to have blood. What was going on was that we were hearing rumors that Mortal Kombat was coming back to the Super Nintendo as a special edition version with blood in it. So we were like, well, if they're going to allow blood in Mortal Kombat, then they're going to allow blood in our game. But in the end, we didn't really care about this fight. I mean, uh, Midway was spanning to lose millions of dollars without the blood. So that's why they were motivated to fight in a court and so forth, force the blood. Where we were like, eh, all we do is just set this one flag and the blood goes away. Do you know if there's a reason why the characters in the game speak English, despite being very clearly German? I just got the voice line, the, the audio files, and I put them in there and I just did not care. <laughs> you know, there's a point where um, if you have time and 
things so you could do the game right and so forth then you can actually care for quality but when you say this game must be done in two weeks and i got this long long list of things to do making certain it's proper german is not on that list do you think these changes ruin the game in any way you can argue it either way the censorship was there because, you know, there was a lot of violence in video games and so forth. And a majority of people know what it is. It's just cartoons. It's not real. I see it as escapist entertainment. And like an example is like when I was playtesting Doom, I had my daughter who's two years old, no, three years old on my, on my knee. And she would be looking at it going like, Percy Monster, Yucky Ball. I mean, she had names for all the monsters because, you know, as a good parent, I'm teaching her that this is fake. This is not real. These are, you know, if you do this to real people, it is bad. You go to jail. Here, you could do it all you want because none of it's real. You know, I could see some parents who just want to shield their children from this kind of stuff. I could see why they don't want to see the blood. But at the same time, the parents aren't going to actually be parents and teach their kids that this is fake, this is not real. Now here in 2023, shielding children from forbidden knowledge is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You need to teach your children, this is bad, this is horrible. Now the thing with Germany is that while I do agree that the fact that Nazism should be stamped out and destroyed, I mean, we're having to deal with it now here in the United States. Nazis was a horrible time in um, world history. Not just Germany, the whole freaking world suffered from those people. We have to remember that history and remember that there's only one thing to do with a Nazi. Nazis are only good for punching. What's your opinion on the fact that none of the censorship was actually legally necessary? Yeah, it should have stayed in. I mean, honestly, that's what the game is. I mean, it's Wolfenstein 3D. As a developer, I don't really try to challenge the laws. I just simply work within them. In order for me to challenge the law, it would cost me a lot of money. And even if I feel I'm going to prevail, do I really want to spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions of euros on um, a court fight that even if I win, it only allows me to put in a game in which I might only make a couple of hundred thousand or 300,000 euros in profit. So therefore, I lost money for the right to earn 300,000 euros. Now, granted, I've earned the right for everybody else to make games uh, with this type of material. It's not a fight that I'm interested in fighting. Now, granted, you know, there are companies like maybe Bethesda or something who might, for whatever reason, decide that they want to do this fight. And if they do, I'm going to cheer them on. But as far as instigating such a, a fight, I've got games to write. I don't have time for this kind of thing. Thank you, Rebecca. Knowing all this, it's interesting to see how many changes were done due to censorship, due to hardware limitations, and which were made just for the heck of it. It was a tumultuous development in many ways, so it's not surprising to see that the reasons behind the changes are all over the place as well. The things to take away from all of this is that this is probably the cleanest version of Wolfenstein 3D you can find, and it's a miracle it even released in the first place. However, it's not the only time that the game made its way into Germany, in one form or another. Let's take a look at those. While Wolfenstein 3D was never fully released in Germany, it did, however, pop up here and there in the form of Easter eggs in other games. One of the earliest examples of this are the secret Wolfenstein levels in Doom 2. However, that's a whole other story in itself, and I think I'm going to save up that one for the episodes on the quirks of German Doom. All I'll say for now is that some of the censorship was quite creative, and some of it wasn't. Another example, however, is Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Now, I'm not talking about the version of Wolf 3D you can unlock after beating the game in the Xbox port, since that one was never actually released in Germany. Instead, I'm referring to a card easter egg which allowed you to play the original levels within the RTCW engine. Sound familiar? Unfortunately, it was taken out for various reasons, and the only remnants of it are the sensor textures from the German version. Surprisingly, nothing from the US release survived. As you can tell, this time the swastikas weren't just taken out, but replaced with the Wolfenstein logo. Hitler's mustache said bye-bye again, but even his hair was redrawn. So maybe his beard wasn't the only thing giving him his evil powers. There's not much else to say, especially since all of this got axed right before release, but it's an interesting look at what the game could have been. Thank you so much to Murphy Black for the backstory and textures you can see on screen right now. But as I just alluded to, this was revisited later for the new order, where you can replay the first level of Wolfenstein 3D in a nightmare. 
The only enemies you fight, the regular soldiers, wear green instead of tan clothes. Not in the post about the bed though. I suppose this was done to differentiate them further from their real world counterparts. However, the uniforms of German soldiers actually were green sometimes, so I don't understand the change. You might also notice that this is pretty similar to how the new Colossus did it in its Wolfstone 3D arcade game. Was this censored version the inspiration for that one? Who knows? And while I won't go into detail about that one, since it's also the same for all regions, it is pretty interesting that technically, that was the first time that German players could legally play the full version of Wolfenstein 3D. Just with different graphics and sounds. Anyway, back to the new order. The swastikas were replaced with the Wolfenstein symbols once more, and the eagles with... Seriously, what is this meant to be? Cancer mouse? The Hitler paintings got changed into ones of Irene Engel, as well as of someone I don't really recognize. Maybe a younger Wilhelm Strasse aka Deathset? No idea, you tell me. All of these differences also apply to the nightmare levels from the old blood, which made no further changes, not even to the SS or Hans Große. On screen and in the comments is a link to a couple videos of that, if you're curious. There's one more version I'd like to point out. As it's not official and was only shown off in a single video, I'll be referring to it as Cute Floor's version, named after the channel's name. While it is the DOS original, it seems to share the same censorship as the SNES version, with the swastika simply being edited out. Hitler's mustache is gone once more and his armband was turned grey. However, all of the blood and gore go unchanged. As pointed out by Murphy Black, this is not a legitimate version of the game, but rather a ROM hack made by Cute Floor themselves. They likely did this to show off the game while abiding by German laws, since they might be German as well. So this is a unique case of self-imposed censorship, but not done by the developers, rather by fans. Now, before we head into the conclusion and why these games were banned and censored, I thought it'd be a neat idea to take a look at the original game's voice acting, since it is meant to be German after all, just to see how it holds up. Guten Tag. For starters, the name on the titular castle is Wolfenstein, with Wolf meaning wolf, obviously, and Stein translating to stone. Now the actual voice lines. I'll be using this video by Mr. Zero as reference, which is at least mostly correct. Link is also below and on screen. The regular guards shout Halt Stopp, not Achtung, which means Halt Stop. <laughs> not much to say. The SS yell their own name, Schutzstaffel. <laughs> This translates to Protection Squad and refers to the real-world people that made up Hitler's bodyguard and which also oversaw the concentration camps. See why I don't feel comfortable quoting these guys? When they die, they let out the iconic Mein Leben, meaning my life. Mein Leben. Obviously, both the quotes aren't anything that anyone in the right mind would ever say. The officers yell out Spion, which means spy. Spion. Upon death, they say Nein Sovas, which is pretty hard to hear. Nein Sovas. It translates to, well I never, and is again not something you'd say in that context. The fake Hitlers greet you with an insult, Schweinehund, translating to pig dog. Todhund. A lot of people seem to think that Germans love saying this one, but I've never heard anyone actually say it outside of non-German media. Hans Große is next. His name isn't actually correct. Groß means big, while Größe, which is more similar, would translate to size. But both those need the SZ, also known as sharp S. I think the name was chosen because English speakers pronounce it as gross, which he is. And he actually greets you by saying Guten Tag, meaning good day. Guten Tag. Another very iconic line and rightfully so. Fun fact, in the Jaguar port, this is what Hitler says instead. Guten Tag. Upon death, he calls out for his mommy with Mutti. Mutti. Dr. Schubs is next, and his name doesn't actually mean anything. Probably just shows because it sounds like scabs when pronounced in English. When he dies, he lets out the paint, Mein Gott im Himmel, meaning My God in Heaven. Uh, mein Gott in Himmel. Otto Giftmacher's surname actually means something, namely Poison Maker. This makes sense because he created the chemical weapons you're trying to put a stop to in the game. Upon spotting you, Otto says, Eine kleine Amerikaner. Eine kleine Amerikaner. This means a little American, but the German is completely broken. The correct version would be Ein kleiner Amerikaner, because Amerikaner is male, while he's using the female form. I think they used it because it sounds so similar to Mozart's Eine kleine Nachtmusik. When he dies, he yells out Donnerwetter, translating to thunderstorm, but referring to an unfortunate circumstance. So it rather means golly or good heavens. Donnerwetter. Hans' sister Gretel is next. Her and his name are a reference to the fairy tale of Hänsel and Gretel, a pair of siblings lost in the woods. 
She tells you kein Durchgang when you approach her, which means no passage. The pronunciation is a bit off though. What she says upon death is a bit unclear. Mein Either it's mein Bruder, i.e. my brother, or it's mein Busen, meaning my bosom. It's definitely not meine Buße, my penance, because it just makes no sense. The second to last person to look at is General Fettgesicht. Yes, that's how you pronounce it, Sibi. It translates to fat face because he does have one. He says, erlauben Sie bitte when spotting you, which basically means, do you mind please, or allow me please. Erlauben Sie bitte. It's really only a half sentence and not something you'd ever say by itself. His last word is Rosenknospe, meaning rosebud. Rosenknospe. A very obvious reference to rosebud frozen peas. And the final person of interest is, of course, Hitler. Boy, don't take that out of context. He's the only one to actually talk to you in English with his Die Leid like Schweinehund. What the last part means, we've already discussed. When a suit breaks, he says this, which I prefer not saying out loud. And once he bites the dust, he says Eva auf Wiedersehen, meaning goodbye Eva, referring to his wife Eva Braun. Eva auf Wiedersehen. Worth mentioning, auf Wiedersehen more translates to see you again. Germans don't really have an equivalent for goodbye in that sense, except Lebe Wohl, which more means farewell. Overall, most of the lines are complete nonsense, but the game never takes itself too seriously, so it really fits. I like that the Wolfstone game in the New Colossus kept the cheesiness intact by translating all of these lines directly. Well, I never... well, I, well, I... But one very big question remains. Why was Wolfenstein 3D banned in the first place? You've probably heard a lot of people say that Wolfenstein 3D was banned because of the references to Nazism, something even I repeatedly stated in the past. The ban was so effective here that publications were even avoiding mentioning the game by name, instead opting to use euphemisms like Böser Wolf 3D, Wolkenheim 4D, or Hundefelsen 4E. We're going to see a lot of that in later episodes. And rightfully so, there's always been outrage over that, because come on, you shoot Nazis in this one. How could they ban something that was so evidently anti-Nazis? Well, let's look at the history. It is true that the Nazi imagery was considered an issue at some point, since distributing it as propaganda is highly illegal here. In 1998, a neo-Nazi was convicted on charges of sharing such propaganda, and among the material was Wolfenstein 3D as well. The judges ruled that digital games weren't serving any purpose in regards to education, art, or anything of the sort, which would have excused the imagery. Meaning games are mindless time wasters, not art. However, that wasn't where the ban originated, that was years earlier, and it wasn't because of the imagery. The original Castle Wolfenstein for the Commodore 64 was also banned by the Federal Department for Writings Harmful to Young Persons. But even here, the references to Nazism weren't the reason. In fact, the department even checked if the game could be excluded because Nazis are a target, echoing what people have been saying ever since. Ultimately, it ended up getting banned for quite the unceremonious reason. Glorification of violence. They stated that it was a, quote, romanticizing of war events and that the Nazi background served, quote, no documentary purpose, but more as a, quote, context for acts of killing and liquidation. This also applied to Wolfenstein 3D because of its, quote, glorification of vigilante justice thoughts, as well as the appraisement of attention-grabbing death scenarios. So the authorities behind actually banning media were able to differentiate between depictions of anti-constitutional symbols as propaganda or justice decoration in video game settings. In fact, they didn't even pass judgment on the usage of extreme right-wing symbols at all. The problem was more that the judges in 1998 ruled that games didn't qualify as being allowed the usage of those symbols by more or less completely ignoring that part of the law. This was never made official in any way though and only pertained to that one case. Furthermore, they also tried to avoid children and teenagers getting used to Nazi imagery, meaning the focus was less on social adequacy and more on protecting the youth. Most interestingly, however, as none of this was ever written into law, there's no reason for Nazis to get censored in the first place. The Organization for the Self-Regulation of Entertainment Software were disallowing all pieces of media with Nazi symbols in them based entirely on that one verdict over 25 years ago. In fact, all of this was pretty much self-imposed censorship done by the developers, not one imposed upon them by censors. They could have very much argued that it wasn't against the law in any way, but that would have probably been more work than just censoring it themselves. All things considered, the ban doesn't even appear as nonsensical as I'd initially thought. 
They still went too far, obviously, as the concern of exposing children to Nazi symbolism and gratuitous gore could have been avoided by simply making the game only available to adults. But the authorities at least had reasonable motivations. It all just came down to that one verdict in 1998, where I suspect the judges intentionally ignored part of the law specifically to be able to convict the neo-Nazi further. Unfortunately, it had wide-reaching consequences, the effects of which are still being felt today. And all that just because the brown-brained idiot tried to recruit even more idiots into his moronic fan club. So, what do we learn? Nazis ruin everything once again. And in more than one way, Wolfenstein 3D paved the way for video games to come. Though in this case, it's an unfortunate one. It matters little these days, as the bands have already been lifted. All of the Wolfenstein titles are available in Germany now, without any censorship whatsoever. The decision to unban Wolfenstein 3D specifically was actually already made in 2019, but only three years later did the game receive a rating and could be sold legally. It was still interesting to find out what the actual reasons behind those bans were, and shows that Cutefloor missed the point by only censoring the swastikas, not the violence, which was the real problem. And it also explains why BJ could have a bloody face in the SNES port, because it wasn't about not having blood at all, it was about glorified violence. And a bleeding nose is less a celebration of violence and more a failure state to avoid. As already mentioned, I think quite fondly of the SNES version in general. It was how I experienced the game at first, and I think it's an impressive conversion overall. In fact, I think I'd place it in the so bad it's good category of German ports. Not one that eclipses the original anyway, but which isn't outright worse than it either. Just a neat and quirky alternative. I'm curious what my opinion on the other ports is going to be. Next up is Return to Castle Wolfenstein, another game I grew up with. I never actually played the German version however, so I'm going to go into it completely blind. Stay tuned for that. Anyway, do let me know what you think. What's your take on the SNES port? Were you surprised by the real reasons behind those bands? Write it in the comments and I'll try to read it. And if you've enjoyed the video, then consider dropping a like, a comment, sharing it with others, and perhaps even donating to my Patreon to support me directly there. Anything is appreciated. A big thanks also to Rebecca Heinemann for the wonderful interview. If gaming in the 80s and 90s was part of your childhood, then chances are she had something to do with it. Go show her all the love you can. But for now, thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day, and goodbye.